Word search. Here's the study. Here's my library. Took all the books that I wanted. The Free Biblical Library, New American Standard, Young's Literal, New King James Version, Almond Standard, ASV, King James V, and I Now these drop down messages I don't think would be in Logos 9. Let, tell me if I'm wrong. I changed the word instead of uh, one of the versions I put up here, I put versions instead of NASB or whatever I put up. And dictionaries, grammar. And so I, to get the library, I just go here. If I want to add the Amplified Bible, bingo, where's the Amplified Bible? Oop, put it over here. Now I can take this, which I've opened, drag it back. Oops. Be careful. There you go. Now the Amplified isn't there. It's over here. I don't like the Amplified Bible, so I'll just take it away. Um, it goes away. So I've set up by using my library into these four windows. Put the complete biblical library in two places in case I want to compare the NASB to the complete biblical library. There you go. We've got window over here. Notice, because it's in here, Second Thessalonians 3 1, it's here automatically. And I can make it smaller or bigger. I don't have to do a lot of searching. There's search boxes that fall down, like let's say I want John chapter 1, verse 1. Hit the drop down box. I don't have to look for a branch of that New American Standard Bible to find John. I just look at first the book, one of the 66, second, chapter 1, 1. Okay. We have drop down Bible, uh, drop down for everything. There's a complete Bible. Now I selected John 1 1. I've got the complete biblical library, New King James Version. I don't have to look for it anymore. It goes right there. How convenient and time saving. Now, I didn't do any of this. This is automatic. For me to set this up in a raw data system like it is in Logos would take an expertise I don't have and an amount of time I don't have. My, not only that, but let's take a look at, at the commentaries on John 1.1. 1, 1. We keep going down. Look at this. John 1.1, 1, 1, I just put my cursor here, and I get it popped up into a window. Now, all through this commentary, you're going to find I, the verses pop up. Because the commentator says the prologue contains many of the very major themes of the gospel, which are later reintroduced and developed more fully. The key terms include life, and it gives you the verse. And light. Darkness. These are convenient, very convenient study helps. Logos and Eternity, John 1, 1 through 5. So the commentator says, as far back as man can think in the beginning of the word. Well, let's look at the first first. Whoops, it's popping up. There it is. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. <coughs> okay. <coughs> I quickly looked at his verse, 1-1. One, one. And I don't know, what, what, what is it in? NASB. That's what I selected. I could have selected any one of the other versions. I like NASB first and foremost. So I have a choice here, and things come up automatically, saves a huge amount of time. That's what the Bible Knowledge Commentary says. Um, it pops on down to a couple other places where it cross-references. Here's a cross-reference. The use of pros, which is, means face-to-face -face or with. Here, he was in the beginning with God. What does it say in 1 Thessalonians 3, 4? For indeed, when we were there with you, see, with you, is how they used to work. So I don't have to keep looking things up. It's automatically popping up. Now, if I 
I have to do all of these links with their, there'd be tens of thousands of them, it would make the task of working uh, with this group of materials that I have in Logos uh, impossible for me. This is a great platform to work in. I'm able to accomplish so much more. Now, let's go back to the four screen thing. I set this up myself. What's missing? Versions, commentary, CBL, and dictionaries. So I can go back, let's see. There we go, all four of them. Now, let's say I come across a word in the dictionary in the Greek Bible. All things. Hanta. Click on here. Open up the dictionary. I have it down there so it pops in. I can put them all together too. I can pop all four together. There's a dictionary. If I just want these two together, I have them there. All, every, each, everything, everyone. Sometimes the suggestion down here is not necessarily the correct one. All, every, each, everyone, everything. All things through him. All things through him came into being. That's an interesting came into being. 1090, 33. 1090 is to be, to come into being, to be made, to be done, to come, to be celebrated. Which one of those definitions works best in here? These are suggestions, and we have to translate them properly. Well, what does NASB say? All things came into being through him. What does the YLT say? All things through him did happen. What did New King James Version say? All things were made through him. Which one is it? Well, we have a chance to decide. So quickly, now, if we nitpick on the verse, verses, because sometimes these translations have differences in wording that uh, are different, contradictory. How do we decide which is which? ASV, all things were made through him. All things were made by him. NIV, through him all things were made. All things came into being through him. I like came into being because that talks about Creator God. So that's what we're talking about here is now you can decide which version and why, and you're beginning to think along with the original text and preferred translations. There are many other translations I could add here, many in my library. These I found the most reliable and fit the context better. The Young's Little Translation, all things all things through him did happen, and without him happened, not even one thing that hath happened. It's kind of awkward, but what does it do? It follows, let's see, it follows the original text. Let's see if I can put the two together. Young's Little Translation, all things through him, all things through him. See how it's literal, and it follows the word order, Young's Little, came into being and without, all things through him did happen, and without him happened not even one thing that hath happened. All right, what does it say? All things through him came into being, and without him came into being not even one which has come into being. There's a different wording here. Notice that there are different manuscripts have different wordings. In this case, what's in the brackets is below the variance, and it's above is the text, Textus Receptus. And there's hardly a difference in the words. Take a look at the Greek here. But I can examine these differences. Hen, ho, gengonin. <coughs> Hen, ho, with a capital H, gengonin. Minor difference, capital letter versus non-capital. So these are some of the things I can decide. I learned so much about the translations and the translators. A lot of people get hung up on one translation versus another. And I can say, well, let's compare them. 
Now, these four windows would be, look at all the version of the uh, course references I'd have to look up. I'd have impossibility for me to form this and work on this. It might take me months and years. And then each day, if I want to work in a, a New Testament passage, I still have to have some idea of where the Old Testament passages might be needed and have that accessible. So you have in the versions, commentaries. These commentaries are not one book of the Bible at a time. You don't have 66 commentaries. You have 40 in the case of expositors. Bible knowledge commentary is all 66 books. I oh, know Old Testament and New Testament. Yes, there's two volumes: New Testament, Old Testament. So we have a problem here with organizing, and then having all these little links put in, and organizing in such a way that when you open up, you have some pop downs that you can use, and there are many other things that I can use that are set up for me automatically. I don't have to go and start my own engineering software company to develop what is already plainly done in such an efficient manner with word search.